you, dear Jan. Hello, you from Ukraine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to have a little bit of rest before my next assignments. But uh, prior to this, I've been really, really busy traveling both to Africa and to uh, Southern America, to, to the Latin Americas. And I've been also covering uh, the situation with the refugee migrant crisis, trying to get into to Europe. So now I have a few weeks off before my next assignment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Jan, could you tell me, please, uh, how photography came into your life and uh, how did you learn this art? Well, I mean, for me, it came really early. I read uh, a book about uh, Eugene Smith uh, and his humanitarian documentations around the world. And uh, I was mind blown by this book about his approach to photography, uh, his ability to show humanity with a, with a photograph, uh, which it didn't really matter whether it was a Spanish village uh, during, uh, during the regime in Spain, or if it was the Minimata catastrophe or a war. I always felt a big compassion and a lot of humanity in his work. And uh, it actually, not as a young man and, and a, a aspiring photographer, but as a human being, these pictures made a big difference for me. And how did you come up with the idea of becoming a photojournalist and why did you choose the direction of military conflicts and wars? Well, again, it started fairly early for me. I was only 15, 16, 17 years old. I moved to Berlin during the Cold War and experienced Berlin while living there with the Berlin Wall. I mean, you had uh, Western Germany and Eastern Germany divided by a wall in the middle of a city. And uh, the divide between people and, and the way that they lived, because you, you have to realize that when I went to Berlin and I came from Denmark, I was actually driving through Eastern Germany. And life in Eastern Germany at that time was so much different from the life once you reached uh, Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin and entered into West Berlin. And I was fascinated by cities which were divided either by international politics or uh, uh, conflicts or even the, maybe even religion to some extent. Uh, and after that, I went to, to Northern Ireland, which had the conflict between uh, Protestants and Catholics. And the situation was kind of the same. You know, the city was divided uh, by Protestant and Catholic areas. And that was my first experience with conflict photography. So it was more the, the, the personal and uh, the way that people were dealing with these, these problems than it was the conflict in itself. The conflict was just a part of it, but, but it was a genuine interest in what people were actually doing. Jan, I understand that uh, during your work, you risk your life no less than every soldier in their service. And yet, tell me please a little bit about the nuances and difficulties of such work. What is the most difficult thing for you personally? Well, I mean, being a conflict photographer is dangerous. We saw it just uh, yesterday with uh, Danish Siddiqui who, who lost his life in Afghanistan. And, and unfortunately, I have lost uh, quite a, a, a big number of good friends to this work. I mean, people do get hurt. It is very, very dangerous. There's absolutely nothing glamorous uh, or even romantic about it. It's really, really hard. Um, so a lot of it has to do with experience and the will to actually try and explain stories which are unique or, or, or very, very interesting for people abroad. And you had the same with the, the revolution in Ukraine. That was also very dangerous as a journalist. And you have it right now as well in Belarus, where journalists and photographers are being uh, haunted and, and captured in the streets in, in terms of showing what is going on. 
So it is a very, very dangerous job. And you have to realize that while doing it. You, you have to realize that this could potentially uh, mean that you would lose your life. And from the human side, is it complicated uh, to see such cruelty and so much suffering of people? Has everything seen over the years of your career somehow influenced you as a person? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm diagnosed with uh, PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress. And for me, it happened after uh, the genocide in Rwanda in April 1994 which I covered. And uh, it was the most brutal thing since the Second World War. In only 100 days, more than 1 million people were killed uh, in, in the most uh, cruel ways. Um, and when I came home from Rwanda after this uh, journey, for, I was there for seven weeks while it happened. I felt that I was someone else. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't relate to my friends or to my family in Denmark. And I had the first, uh, I had the first feelings of what a post-traumatic stress syndrome means. Mm -hmm. you, cannot, you cannot do what I do and go through that entire period of more than 30 years and not have scars, uh, mental scars on your mind because the cruelty is, is everywhere. So it, it affected my personal life a lot. And uh, have there been times when you were on the verge of death? If there were such moments, please share a story. Well, <laughs> a lot. I'm, afraid, I'm afraid to say too many and too often. Um, it, it happens constantly, but I can give you an example, which is the most recent one, which was uh, in Mosul in Iraq, uh, when the coalition forces and the Iraqi army was fighting Daesh or Islamic State, which was extremely dangerous because it was an, uh, it was an urban warfare. It's a very big city. And, and the Islamic State uh, was dug in everywhere. So every, it, the battle was from street to street uh, from house to house and while while running through these streets you know you would have a sniper uh, having you in his target and and we actually had some situations there where I got caught by two snipers and I was sitting behind the wreck of a car while they were shooting at me and eventually uh, the Iraqi army, army came and they rescued me out so it happens all the time and, and for me, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a difficult thing to talk about because it's, it's more like a daily thing or, or something that you experience when you go to a war zone. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's something that happens more often uh, than not, which is also to say that if you want to be a conflict photographer and you want to cover a war, you have to be in the front lines which obviously is the most uh, dangerous places to be. Yeah, maybe it's uh, some like uh, some stupid question, but it's very interesting for me. Uh, are you scared of your life, of your health, uh, when you go to um, every, every single of uh, your work conflicts? No, I mean, uh, no, it, it's not really something that I think about. Uh, for me, it's, um, I mean, I've been doing this for, for so, such a long time now, and I know exactly why I'm doing it, you know, because these pictures are important, not just for me or for a Danish audience, but, but in, a, in a more uh, worldwide situation. I mean, these pictures, it's, an, it's an important to show people, whether it's in Copenhagen or in Odessa or in Paris, what is happening outside our own borders, right? Uh, and, and my idea about doing this means that I have to go there. And I know it's dangerous, uh, but if you go there and you are scared, it, it will affect your work uh, straight away. So the question is more to live with the with the the fear. I mean, it's not that I don't get scared while I'm there. 
I do. I mean, I hate when the sniper can can look at me or if there is a, a mortar uh, shelling going on. It's not that I I'm not scared of that, but I know that uh, there's a reason why I'm there. In uh, such difficult conditions, it is very important that the cameras are available and will not fail. What cameras do you use and why? Oh, I use a lot of different cameras. <laughs> you know, uh, some people would call me unfaithful uh, because I shoot with all different kinds of brands. I shoot a medium format. Uh, I shoot, uh, I shoot Leica's, I shoot uh, Sony, I shoot uh, Fuji, I, I still shoot a lot of film photography as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, I shoot a panorama 6x17, six by, uh, six by uh, very, very large uh, negatives. So I shoot in many different, uh, in many different ways. And it, it all has to do with the fact that I do feel sometimes that digital photography is too, too glamorous. It's very, very polished in many ways. Uh, it's too clean, so to speak. And sometimes the, when you shoot in, in film photography where it's more grainy and it's more, it has another structure or another feeling, then I shoot film. So it also has very much to do with my, uh, uh, where I am creatively at a certain point, uh, what kind of lenses I shoot. I mean, I only shoot three lenses on all these very, very different uh, camera formats. I shoot a 28, 35 and a 50 millimeter. Mm -hmm. I have nothing longer than a 50 millimeter. Uh, but I often travel with a seven, eight cameras. Um, depending on on the assignment and I I swap uh, frequently depending on my mood it, it's very mood orientated oh, very interesting and apart from cameras uh, when you are going to cover a war conflict what are the most important things you need to take with you what's always in your travel bag well, if it's a conflict, I mean, there's a lot of things that you need to bring with you. I mean, your your uh, bulletproof vest or your flag jacket or your your medical kit. Uh, I mean, things which are practical and and needs to be there. Uh, you know, that's from a professional point of view. There's there's a lot of things. For instance, if you go to Afghanistan, and you want to fly with the army from Kabul to the Helmand province they will not allow you on a helicopter without your flak jacket or your, your, your bulletproof vest. And I hate to wear it because it, it brings a distance between me and the people that I want to photograph. You know, you, you walk around protected while the civilian population are not protected at all. So, so for me, I mean, that's a given. I need to have it. Uh, I need to have a medical kit so I can be prepared in, 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 in different ways. And if you ask me from a more private uh, uh, situation, mm -hmm. I would always bring candles. Mm -hmm. Because you can live in the most terrible hotel room in the most terrible place in the world with uh, neon lights in the ceiling and everything looks like shit. And you can turn it off and, uh, and light a few candles and play uh, some of your favorite music. And all of a sudden, you feel cozy and at home. Yeah. Could you tell me uh, how the tactics of shooting itself in a military environment differ from an ordinary city or nature? What should be done and what absolutely shouldn't be done? That's a difficult answer uh, or difficult question to, to, to actually answer because there's a lot of things that you need to do mm -hmm. differently. First of all, you have to find out the dynamics of this place where you are. Who is, who is controlling what and why? What, what are their approach? Uh, what, what areas of a city or, or an, a, an area is dangerous? Uh, who can you trust? Who can you not trust? 
uh, all these things are basic uh, information which is really, really needed. So I always try, I have a very big network of uh, fixers, helpers, translators uh, locally who can help me with this because you cannot just drive into a war zone and say and knock on the door and say wait hey what is this you have to have a lot of knowledge and a lot of information um and and i you know this this has become a part of my life i'm used to it so you would meet uh, young journalists or photographers who don't have this experience and they would do things which, which you would help them with saying, hey, listen, don't do that. That's really, really dangerous. Or don't trust everybody you meet. We had a lot of, of, of examples of this with the war in Syria when people were traveling illegally into to, to Syria from Turkey. Uh, and the fixes that they got hired by were actually handing them over to Islamic State on the other side. You know, they they went into it for the money, so there was like a black market for this. So again, you know, your sixth sense or you know, trusting people are really really essential. Mm, thank you. And you cannot compare it. I mean, huh. if I was to go to Odessa or to Moscow or to Kiev or whatever to photograph, to do street photography in the streets. That's something completely different. You know, I could talk to people, they, they could say yes or no or whatever. When you go into a war or a conflict area, I mean, people kill you. So quite a, diff quite a different thing. Yes, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, do you, think photography can change something in the world or is it a tool to draw attention to a problem? I think it's both. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of photography has to, to, to do with drawing attention to a, to a certain conflict. Uh, I do believe that some images, if you look at it historically, that has been the case many times that, that a picture or a story has actually changed the hearts and minds of people uh, in other places in the world, in other countries. There are these icons, you know, whether it was the fall of Berlin or if it was uh, the Vietnam War, which actually changed the political dynamics of a country, especially the Vietnam War. One, you obviously you remember the picture of the small girl who was hit by napalm running out of, of a village and, you know, this very famous picture by Nigut, uh, that changed the political dynamics of the US in terms of people were saying, what is it that we are doing? Are we killing innocent children? So, so definitely, I do believe that photography can change uh, the mindset and, and uh, the history, so to speak. But more importantly, I think that the most interesting thing about photography is that photojournalism should not answer questions. It should raise questions. So whenever I go somewhere, I'm not going there and, and I shoot a story. I'm not there to tell you what you should think. I'm there to try to implement uh, a situation within your mind and having you decide yourself saying, what do I think about this? You know, and if you can raise that question with people who are looking at your work, you have actually already done a big difference. I mean, people can be disagreeing with me politically in a situation. I know where I'm standing from a political point of view, but for me, the biggest problem in the world today is ignorance when we don't care. Yes. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And the last question, Jan. Let's imagine that I'm your student and want to become a war photographer. What are the very first important things you would explain to me? What should I know at the very beginning? I would say you would have to define to me why you are doing it. 
are you doing it for the adventure? Are you doing it uh, to become famous? Are you doing it because a story actually means something to you? Something that you really feel in your heart and in your mind that you want to share. And once you convinced me about that, that you were there for the right reasons, I would say that you need to look out uh, and look at how people are coping in these situations. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, which is really, really important, which comes with knowledge or, uh, or actually having uh, been, been working in these areas for a long time. There's a lot of experience that you need to get uh, for two very different, uh, for two very simple reasons that, that most of the, the people that I know who have gotten themselves killed, I mean, it can happen to everyone. It happened to uh, Tim Hetherington. It happened to a lot of very famous and very, very experienced photographers. But a lot of the people who get into the most trouble are young, unexperienced uh, photographers. Uh, and, you, and, you, and you have to learn this. You have to learn how to trust your instincts. You have to, to look on how to, to, to go about because the only rule there is in conflict and war photography is that there are no rules and you can get yourself killed. So, so having an honest mind, having an honest uh, ideology about why I'm there is important. Second thing is personal security. Look out for yourself because there's only one thing which is completely sure. A dead photographer does not take very many pictures.